Welcome to a new update. Today we discuss the upcoming week. The Monday has been boring. Tuesday has been boring. Tomorrow, big day. It is going to be CPI day, so the market's going to move. Why? That's what we're going to discuss in this update. But before we continue, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, check out our other social media channels and make sure to join our premium membership where you can find more content when it comes to uh, myself trading the portfolios, other traders making trades and more. Thank you for Bybit for sponsoring this actual video. It is my derivatives exchange, which I use to actively trade the markets within the Netherlands. You can also join a Bybit. If you do, you're going to get 15% reduction on the trading fees for two months. And you're getting $20 for free if you deposit 100 bucks and $40 for free if you deposit 300 bucks. Now, this week is going to be a big week because it's CPI week and CPI is uh, an inflation indicator, which means that if it comes out higher than expected, it is going to be a case where we are reaching um, consensus that inflation is going to be sticky. So probably the yields are going to continue to rally, uh, probably um, the risk on assets are going to fall and also Bitcoin is going to suffer. Something we need to consider is the fact that the markets are already pricing additional hikes and are already super, super bullish on the, re on the um, government bond yields. Which means that we're getting towards the end stage of the hiking policy and a soft CPI would be the indicator that we're going to have a reversal on the yields and that we are actually at the end of the hiking policy so that's what we could be seeing in the upcoming days cpi is expected to come in around three percent so tomorrow 2 30 pm is a big day on thursday we've got another big one um, to this week it's not FOMC week but we do have uh, the european bank um, adjusting their main refinancing rate uh, and providing an outlook for their policy which is going to be provided at 2.50 p.m. on Thursday and we've got a case of uh, PPI coming in and retail sales and unemployment claims on Thursday too. Recall from last week that the unemployment claims came in way more positive than expected however unemployment rates ADP non-farm employment change etc is getting in worse than expected so there might be a delay in the actual data if unemployment starts to come in higher than expected, which is worse than expected, PPI comes in softer than expected, I bet commodities and Bitcoin are going to move up instead of down. On Friday, we finalized with consumer sentiment, um, which was revised, but last month wasn't really that positive at all. Um, and we've got the Empire State Manufacturing Index, which, is, uh, which was last month quite bearish. And we'll have to see whether that's going to be the case. And what do we have more? We've got the price action of Bitcoin, which is on the edge of having a very volatile move. We still know that there is most likely going to be an ETF to be announced anywhere within the next six months. But the question is when and how are we going to get it? Or are we going to get ETH futures first? And are we going to have a substantial correction on the markets before we can actually have continuation? So with the Bitcoin chart, the weekly chart, it shows that we're currently on a 200 week EMA. And I discussed it last week too. We need to hold above it. If we do not hold above it, that's going to be the trigger for me that I'm going to look at entry points around 20 to 22K. That's probably the area that I find it to be crucial to sustain a support. If that's going to sustain a support, then we can have, uh, that's the final correction, and then we can have upwards momentum. We already have seen this retest here. Um, I bet we can have, if we get there, we probably continue to run and the correction is already over. But if we are not able to get there, most likely we are going to fall further. Uh, but altcoins against Bitcoin will still do well, which means that altcoins are going to drop less than Bitcoin. And then we can have continuation on the altcoins from October onwards, just like every cycle is a copy paste of each other. What are we looking at? We are seeing tremendous strength on the dollar. So in the upcoming week, as the dollar has also bounced on a 200 week EMA, we are going, to, or in this week, we are going to watch how far the dollar will come. 
I've mentioned a few important levels, the one on at 4.75 and the one at 106. The last one is the major. If that one is going to be cracked and we sweep, most likely we're done with the run for now and at least have some period of consolidation, which is going to fuel other assets. The two year yield is currently still grinding up, but something to take into account. Given the fact that this week is going to be so important based on the CPI, PPI, retail sales, etc., it might be a turnaround, just like we have been seeing here. We might be seeing a case of a valid bearish divergence to be played out so that we start to have that reversal. Here you can see how fast it went. November 2018, we were at 3%, and one year later, November 2019, we were at half of that. So it could be a case that we are going to be at two and a half in a year from now, especially if inflation is not going to be remaining sticky. So this bearish divergence is something to take into account. If this reverse, just like we have been seeing here in November 2018, the bear market is over for Bitcoin and we start to have a run. The bull was agreed, gone. There we go. The 10 years still making new highs, um, especially the monthly chart I'm looking at here. Um, it's all depending on a monthly close, but then we're also going to have a bearish divergence here, which implies that we're going to have a correction. Gold currently consolidating. I would prefer to see it continue to consolidate. Uh, I wouldn't re really see it go down that much. Uh, once we start to break the high, just like we have been seeing here, that's when the real breakout starts to occur. And that's also where Bitcoin is going to continue to move. As I said previously, we are on the edge of having a very important weekly close. Uh, the past week we did it, this week is again the same. Not holding 200 week EMA, you have to buy lower. Holding the 200 week EMA and have a green candle this week, thumbs up. Party is on, we most likely have finished. People are focused solely on the previous cycle in September of 2019, in which we had another low. Uh, I don't think that that is very likely especially since in 2015 we've had the exact same a massive crash period of consolidation and then during october and november we started to grind up slowly so i think we're going to have a copy paste but when we get towards cpi and ppi you want to see lower numbers you want to see unemployment go up and you'll want to see a case where we most likely see the dollar fall and the yields fall if it's going to be the opposite bitcoin loses the 200 week ema ciao